Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about paracut poisoning. Paracut and diacut. Diacut classified as biperidyl compounds. They are herbicides. Both are herbicides and they are very inexpensive. So, these drugs are used by, for uh, uh, su alleged suicide in many uh, areas of uh, rural India. And the mortality in paracut is paracut poisoning is very very high. 50 to 90 percent of the mortality is observed in paracut poisoning. Diacut has got same clinical features of paracut. We will see what are the clinical features of paracut and diacut. So the problem here in paracut is after ingestion paracut is concentrated inside many cells where it undergoes redox cycling. A byproduct of this uh, process is a superoxide radical. So, this superoxide radical is highly reactive oxygen species. It can produce direct cellular injury. So, this direct cellular injury can be aggravated when we are giving oxygen for this patient. That also we will see during the uh, treatment. This redox cycling, cycling can also consume NADPH, one of the cell's key antioxidant defense uh, mechanism. So, ultimately this uh, free radical injury and uh, depletion of NADPH uh, which is an antioxidant that will lead to cell death, cell necrosis, apoptosis that is uh, cell injury and death. So, all these things ultimately lead to multi organ dysfunction syndrome, but it mainly this problem mainly affects the lungs, lungs and kidneys. Organ involvement if you see the high blood flow organs are classically involved in paracut poisoning, especially lungs, heart, kidneys, liver, but uh, brain most of the patients who consume paracut, their uh, their consciousness level is not decreased or they never have any low GCS, something like that. Most of the these paracut preparations are uh, co-formulated with an emetic, so that many a times when the before the patient come to hospital itself, they have severe vomiting and most of the uh, poisons they might have. Uh, lost from the body. But however, when they take large quantity of paracut, there is a high chance of tissue injuries and especially for lungs and kidneys. So, the lethal dose is if they swallow more than 30 ml, there is a mouthful uh, paracut uh, solution. Itself patient can develop severe toxicity. Uh, but many times patient may vomit after taking this uh, uh, this uh, preparation so that uh, they have mostly they have only oral cavity lesions and Im if immediately they vomit patient may not develop any tissue injuries. But if the patient does not vomit and if the uh, paracut is absorbed to the systemic circulation there is a high chance of uh, tissue injury. And uh, if the patient is already having renal failure, like a, a patient who is having a diabetic nephropathy or a chronic renal failure and age is also a factor, then the removal of the paracut will take a longer time and that aggravates the poisoning. Now, if you see the symptoms of paracut poisoning, poison, oral and gastrointestinal features of are predominant. They have nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain and uh, oral necrosis, tissue necrosis, inflammation, ulceration of mouth, pharynx, uh, all are seen. Respiratory system, most of these patients are tachypnics, tach tachypnic and uh, bilateral crepitations are heard because of ARDS-like features. So, lung parenchymal involvement or ARDS or fibrosis of the lung is very, very common in paracut poisoning. Acute renal injury can be due to two reasons. One is severe vomiting. Uh, and other GI symptoms produces severe dehydration that produces pre-renal failure. Another problem is acute tubular necrosis. Both are very common in uh, paracut poison. 
but if the patient is already having kidney disorder the the, the removal of the paracut will be delayed that also aggravates the problem now we can see the investigation we have to see the qualitative confirmation of paracut in the urine because paracut is not uh, not a routine poison uh, like uh, sometimes uh, there are many other uh, herbicides or pesticides small amount you can see in our blood or urine uh, because the uh, uh, because of the uh, increased usage of this type of herbicides or pesticides it can be present in some um, uh, patients blood or urine but here paracut is not at all uh, uh, commonly seen in a routine patient so a high level of paracut or if even if uh, uh, even if a trace of paracut uh, in the urine or uh, uh, blood it is very important so routinely we do urine paracut if it is qualitative confirmation is there means it is very very important paracut elimination is mainly th done through kidneys and most of this ingested paracut uh, can appear within 24 hours in minor poisoning if the kidney functions are already uh, compromised like a patient who is having renal failure previous pre existing renal failure or the renal failure is due to paracut then the removal or elimination will be slower so normally it takes nearly 24 hours to 100 hours like 2 to 3 days minimum it will take to remove all the paracut from the body in a normal kidney other investigation electrolytes are very very important because patient is having vomiting diarrhea and acute kidney injury so hyperkalemia hyponatremia all these things are very common hypomagnesemia renal function elevated urea creatinine is very important elevated urea alone is seen in severe dehydration creatinine can be elevated in kidney failure blood gases patient many patients with severe vomiting can have alkalemia acidemia is commonly seen in patients who is having respiratory acidosis uh, that is a part of paracut poisoning because many patients who can have respiratory acidosis because of uh, lung parenchymal involvement so that can be temporary or permanent so this patient can have respiratory acidosis arterial lactate can be elevated the lactic acidosis is very very common in uh, severe paracut poisoning mm, uh, chest radiographs chest x-rays are very important sometimes we may need to take ct chest also to see the lung fibrosis now management uh, when we are managing a patient with uh, uh, paracut poison resuscitation of the patient is very very important we have to take care of the airway breathing circulation that most important here in paracut poisoning is the uh, airway and breathing because when they take a, 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 a poison like paracut there is a high chance of oral ulcers oral inflammation pharyngeal laryngeal inflammation there is a uh, there is a possibility of airway compromise so initially itself we have to we have to uh, secure the airway that is very important then second thing is these patients can have hypoxemia minimal hypoxemia we no need to give oxygen because oxygen itself un unwanted oxygen itself can uh, produce uh, oxygen related tissue toxicity in this type of patients free radical injuries are common when we are giving oxygen so unnecessarily giving oxygen is not a correct strategy in paracut poisoning if the po2 uh, spo2 less than 90% then we can give uh, oxygen otherwise oxygen is not recommended in paracut poison now activated charcoal can be given as 1 gram per kg in water uh, maximum 50 grams it has to be given as soon as possible so ideal uh, ideal timing is uh, from the uh, uh, intake time to uh, 1 hour within 1 hour if you can give uh, charcoal activated charcoal the uh, the advantage is very good charcoal hemoperfusion is another strategy in treating this type of patients charcoal hemoperfusion means it is done with a dialysis machine blood will be circulated through a charcoal filled uh, perfusion uh, cartridge so that uh, from blood all this uh, uh, paracut uh, molecules will be adsorbed so adsorbent is added to cartridge and blood is passing through that cartridge in a dialysis machine 
so the uh, poison will be removed that is uh, charcoal hemoperfusion this is charcoal hemoperfusion you can see the cartridge blood is passed through the cartridge which contains the adsorbent so the poison will be adsorbed and removed anti inflammatory and immunosuppressive therapy like uh, dexamethasone that is a steroid uh, uh, other anti inflammatory drugs also can be given but one of the easiest and safest drug will be steroid high dose of steroid 8 mg iv tid uh, in first 72 hours to the patient with acute paracute poison is very very important so dexamethasone should be given for all patients who is having paracute poison Antioxidant therapy like N-acetyl cysteine infusion continuously also should be given. Diacute is related to her related herbicide like Paracut that is often formulated with Paracut. There are relatively few reports of Paracut a diacute poisoning, but it appears to involve mechanisms and manifest clinical features similar to those of Paracut. So the clinical findings and treatment is almost similar. And many paracut uh, formulations are co-formulated with diacut, so no need to uh, learn the clinical findings and treatment separately. Whatever we have discussed in the previous slide, that is applicable for diacut also. So we have discussed about one of the important uh, toxicological subject that is paracut poison. It is very very common in uh, rural India because it's a cheaply available herbicide. The problem with the uh, paracut is uh, that produces free radical injury to tissues especially in the lungs. Lung fibrosis is very very common. The survival ratio is very low even then if the patient survives there is high chance of fibrosis in the tissues especially in the lung tissues. So lung fibrosis is very very common. So initially itself if you are able to neutralize the toxin with charcoal and charcoal hemoperfusion then it will be very good. Because once the uh, poison go and attach to the cells, there is no point in neutralizing the uh, uh, poison because that, will, that is already attached. Only in circulating, only a circulating uh, toxin can be neutralized. So, I initial, initially itself we have to uh, go for charcoal, oral charcoal or charcoal hemoperfusion. Otherwise, the survival, survival rate will be very low. Or patient uh, ha can have lung fibrosis initially itself in emergency room itself we have to start steroids steroids are one of the easily available uh, anti-inflammatory drug that can prevent some amount of uh, fibrosis there are some reports cyclophosphamide also can be given with similar effect of steroids cyclophosphamide should be given along with mesna that can prevent uh, 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 like uh, uh, hemorrhagic cystitis so all these things are separate issue but normally we give only steroid steroid 8 mg iv tid will be uh, used as anti inflammatory anti fibrotic measure initially itself thank you